Hello, and welcome to episode 117 of the Crochet Cakes podcast. Is that knitting? Where we're going to talk about, yes, knitting, my works in progress, any finished items, what I'm reading, and we're also going to have a very fun, I hope, discussion of is knitting becoming fast fashion? So thank you for joining me today. That's bright. Hello, I hope that you are doing well or as well as can be expected because you know the situation in Earth is, is not the best and I hope that you have been moving forward with love and kindness and definitely helping where you can locally because sometimes we may not be able to help globally but as long as we keep that little grain of sand going in our little community you know we can eventually get to that sand castle and of course as humans one of our great selling points is our capacity to love and to spread love if we choose to do so so yes i hope that you have been keeping well and you've had some little bit of crafty moments and i hope that this youtube channel is able to bring you some joy and just a little moment of your day or night that you're spending with me and that I'm spending with you. I hope that it's fun, it's uplifting and good company, definitely <laughs> good company. Um, I think I'm going to take my glasses off because I actually chose to film a bit later on in the day just to take advantage of all this natural light that comes in through the window and it's glare in my glasses. No, oh, now I feel weird. Ugh. As I said at the beginning of this video, we are going to be talking about some finished items, some works in progress, and yes, some knitting. But before we get into all that handmade goodness, I do want to pose a question to you, or more like have a little discussion with you. And that is due to something that popped up on my Instagram this week. And it's essentially, is knitting or crochet becoming fast? fashion. Now before we answer the question or have the discussion, I think we should clarify what fast fashion means to each of us, right? So for me, fast fashion is something that I make or buy just to consume in that one instance and then I forget about it. So perhaps I bought this top specifically for a Halloween costume and I'm just never going to use it again. But more than that, rapid consumption, I also feel that it's in the quality of the items I use to make, um, in the quality of the materials. So for example, when I go to a store and buy uh, a shirt, I want to make sure it's either cotton or linen, just because those items breathe better in the summer, and they tend to be of a higher quality than, say, a polyester or a rayon. Of course, this is keeping in mind that I am not just buying to quickly discard. These are pieces in my wardrobe that will last a while. Of course, if we look a little bit back in history, uh, 16th, 17th century, fashions didn't change that fast. And when they did change, you could still use your pre-existing silhouette and alter it to become a newer silhouette. Now, when this all became just good business, that's when fast the fast in the fashion comes in, right? We produce fast to consume fast to throw away fast. So these items are not lasting more than one or two times of wear. So that is what I define as fast fashion. Of course, there's also the ethos behind the people that work in it. Are they getting fair compensation? Um, so we've covered that. If you have anything to add or would like to have a discussion on this or add your thoughts, please comment in the description and the description. No, please place a comment down below. I love having these discussions with you because it's ways of broadening our minds and just encouraging healthy conversations. Now that I've shared with you what I consider fast fashion, 
we're going to move on to the question, is knitting slash crochet becoming fast fashion? I can see ways that why of why this question was posed and I will leave a link to the article I was reading from Knit IQ down in the description box below and incidentally in the description box is where you, where you will find the chapters for this video so that you can better navigate and I don't know come back or just skip ahead to the parts that interest you. So yes, um, I'll place that in the description box below but I can see two reasons why this question would be posed. Number one, we are seeing crochet and handmade knit items pop up in a lot of companies or brands that we would consider fast fashion. This again would go back to the idea that you're just consuming to throw away because the fashion is changing from one month to the next. Okay? So um, companies that come to mind are Zara, obviously. They, they're kind of infamous for doing that. I think the, there's another one starts with an S. I'm not remembering the name. But suffice it to say, we've seen it a lot, right? And we, of course, as makers, know how long it's going to take to make that piece. So if you're selling it to me for $30 or £30, how much did the person making it actually earn? So those are questions. But also from the perspective of a as a crochet designer or handmade business owner. So the word there, right, is business. My hope uh, in being self-employed and making a living off of my crochet is just that, that I'll be able to make a living off of my crochet. And because I want to earn this living wage, I feel the pressure to put out new items every month. And by new items, I mean designs, new crochet designs every month. And is that sustainable for me as a maker? Sometimes, sometimes not. It really depends on the item I'm working on. And is it sustainable to me as a designer? It's also something to keep in mind because I think that because of the way we've constructed our consumer society today, we just expect more faster. We expect next day shipping from small businesses. We expect just a faster turnaround than is physically possible for that one person that is behind making all these items. Incidentally, I was also thinking about this before the knitting is knitting fast fashion question popped up on Instagram because a couple of weeks back I had a comment from somebody say um, in one of my posts I was wearing an item that I had made about two or three years ago and she was commenting that I should move forward and make new things and show newer items instead of focusing on these previous pieces and that comment struck me as odd because the person is a maker themselves so why would you rush the making process but then i thought well if she's viewing me as a design business i can see how it would be detrimental or how we have constructed businesses to be detrimental if we don't produce newer items all the time and of course this brought me back to my philosophy behind my crochet designs and that is that while I am while I am very open to trying new ideas and designing things that people want to see I also don't want to just turn into a designer that only produces items that other people would wear um, I want to be 100% confident that this piece that I am producing is something that I would also wear because I, I don't just want to sell my designs to you. I want you to see that I use them. I want you to see how I use them and I want to inspire you to have crochet as part of your everyday. And as a maker, I have to confess that sometimes I feel slightly overwhelmed with the amount of new content that is produced for me to consume because it takes me 
about two months to complete a garment sometimes depending on the complexity, the thickness of the yarn and <laughs> the largest of the project. It's gonna take a while and I want to make all the things. So it kind of just, I myself just add this pressure and I know other people do it too because I've had comments from people that say that thank you for sharing how slow it is or the reality behind uh, crocheting with tendonitis because I don't think people talk about it a lot. And it's true. I think we're so focused on the make, 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 more, 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 that we kind of tend to forget we're people. The makers behind these designs are people too. And we can only make within the limitations of our own bodies, our times, our life. Those are my couple of cents in terms of is knitting becoming fast fashion. In conclusion, I think that I think that this idea of fast fashion um, in terms of knitting and crochet depends on the person making them. This is the beauty of making things. You can donate them, you can rip them back, you can turn them into something that will benefit you or your lifestyle. So now I just pose the question to you. Do you think knitting or crochet is becoming fast fashion? Now that I just gave all that talk, I want to present to you a finished item. Um, if you watched the previous video, which was a birthday vlog, you will have seen this finished item. But just in case you haven't, let me introduce you to the Ivana Vest Turned Dress. Now, and just kind of going along with the sustainability theme of this episode, um, the Part of the yarn uh, for this project was already in my stash. It was part of a blouse that I didn't use anymore, so I frogged it back. And I kept the yarn because you guys know that this Granny Smith by Bernat Softy Baby Cotton is one of my absolute favorite yarns uh, in terms of the color. I just, I just love this color. So I think up till this section right here, I was using the... Um, top that I was frogging back and then I purchased the rest of the items that I needed to make this dress. There's about uh, seven balls of yarn total in the making of this dress and they are 150 gram skeins. So it's a pretty hefty dress but I am very proud that I sourced pieces uh, from my own collection to just kind of turn them into something that I would wear and that I would want to give them second life. Luckily, I hadn't woven in the ends on that top and I could frog it back because I have a top that I've been trying to frog for a year and I still can't find the ends. Ultimately, I'm gonna give it up as a bad job and I am gonna cut it and just repurpose and salvage what I can of that yarn and turn it into something else, probably something for my kitchen because I am itching to make more stuff for my kitchen. So yes, this is the Ivana Vest Turn Dress. You can read all the details about that if you're interested in the blog post that I will link in the description box below. And if you just want to view it and not read it, then I will also link the Ivana Vest Turn Dress vlog for you. Sorry about the light changes, but like I said, I'm going with natural light in this video and it just keeps coming in and out. So that is finished item, cheeky finished item, and the other, whoa. The other finished item I have to share with you is a little tiny make. Um, it was St. Patrick's Day yesterday because I am filming this on Friday, February the 18th, and I decided to make a little four leaf clover and turn it into a bookmark. So. This is a pattern by Caroline of Mind and Muse Crafts, and I loved it. It was so quick and easy to make, and I just turned it into a little bookmark because I, I find that I'm using a lot of bookmarks now that I'm kind of journaling, just to keep on track with where, when I said what, or where I wrote what, where I wrote what, that is the correct one. And going back a little bit to the episode of, um, title of the episode of Is That Knitting, I'm going to show you why now. And that is because I have started a project that I talked about in the first episode of this year. And that was the Ladyfinger sweater. <clears throat> and 
that is a knitting pattern. Yes, it's a pattern by More Thunder. Her first name is Morgan. Last name, I don't know, but her details will be in the description box below. And I have started the sweater. It looks like nothing now because I've scrunched up my stitches in these <clears throat> 16 inch cable needle. Yeah, so this is color work. As you can see, we've got some leftover yarn from the Ivana Vestern dress into this top and this is another top that I am frogging back. It was a test that I did. I think it's called the Little Teeth Tea. It was a really lovely tea to make, um, t-shirt I mean to make, but I didn't end up liking the colors I chose for it so I thought I'll just leave it hanging out here. I won't weave in the ends and I'll frog it back and use that yarn for something else, which I have. Now um, I should incidentally say that while I am a crochet designer and I always encourage people to swatch because otherwise it's hard to know where you're having an issue with the pattern, I did not swatch. No, 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 I did not because ain't nobody got time for that, realistically speaking. <laughs> Although, you know, 30 minutes takes you to knit a swatch, saves you a lot of time in the long run. But I didn't swatch. I am using the needles recommended in the pattern and that is because I am using cotton-ish yarns. So as you know, this is a cotton acrylic blend. The white that you see here is also a cotton acrylic blend by Sirdar, if I'm not mistaken. They classify it as a DK weight, but I really classify it more of a sport weight. And in addition to these colors, I'm going to be using this one, which is a sport weight yarn left over from my um, the, the faded the faded sweater that I made. So we got all this going, and if you are more into crochet, please do not be disappointed because my brain could not turn it off either. As soon as I started making this one, I thought, why not crochet a version of it? So my brain couldn't shut off the crochet either, and I actually started um, a crochet version of this. It's not my own design, obviously. I'm following the instructions set forth by More Thunder, um, and I'm just at the beginning of the color work. I'm just trying to play around with how I want to proceed because I have chosen fingering weight and light sport weight yarns for this, with the exception of this kind of silvery color that you see here. This one is a, a thick sport weight. I would classify it more of a DK. It's the Shine Sport Weight by We Crochet. And I, as I said, I would classify it more as a DK. So I'm playing around with how I'm carrying my yarn here. Basically, I'm just leaving my gray to float, but I'm carrying the blue in the back just because I think that would be easier. I decided to go just with single crochet stitches uh, with this one. We'll see if it's a mistake or not. So the reason I decided not to carry is because, as I said, this sport weight um, yarn is a lot thicker than the other one, which is a fingering weight cotton. So I didn't want to add to the bulkiness of it, so I'm just leaving the floats. I hope I left them floaty enough to not uh, strangle me when I wear the top. Of course, since this is crochet, I, I did have to make some changes to the start of the pattern. I started with less stitches for my neckline and I've actually omitted the one by one rib that she did just because I'm going to do that as an afterthought and I will knit the rib. I really like the look of a knit rib so where I can possible you know I, I like to include that just for my own version of things. Okay. Oh thank you. So yeah we're crocheting it. Now, as you can see, this version is a lot more blue than this other version. Um, for the crochet version, I started with 3.25 millimeter um, hook, uh, but I am using a four millimeter hook, which is the same needle size she recommends for the yarn. So I'm using that for the top as well. And um, hopefully won't need to purchase any yarns. The idea with these projects is to use stash 
um, lots of it, hopefully. Um, I think, yeah, the other yarn I'm gonna use for the blue one is this one right here. Can you see that? It's kind of like aqua unicorn-y color. Yeah, this is the other one I'm gonna be using with the blue. With the green, I hope to just alternate between white and all the yarn I have of this. So I might just make it a two color top instead of a three color top. We'll see. You can find all the details for this pattern in the description box below. Like I said, it is not my pattern. So I'm not uh, gonna give too many details because you know, there's always a fine line of how much do I talk about this pattern without giving the actual pattern away. Uh, but it's color work. Oh. I forgot to show you my floats. Yeah. I honestly have to say that the scariest part of this, as I've talked about before with the other mm, Lily Kate makes pattern that I wanted to make is um, the German short rows. And I looked up a video and they weren't that intimidating. Okay, I lied. I was very intimidated when I saw the video of the German short rows, but I, I just decided I'm just gonna do it. What comes out is gonna come out, and you know, it turned out all right in the end. I was going for 80% perfect, 20% wing it, and I think I got that. I think I got that 80 20. Um, so, yeah, other than is knitting becoming fast fashion and commissions and these designs that I just started, um, I don't think I'm, I'm doing much. Uh, I am going to be teaching some classes in a retreat in April, so stay tuned for that. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it before. And I do have several designs that will be coming out as part of magazines and subscription boxes as well. Uh, I think I, if you follow Bello Coco on Instagram, she she mentioned me as one of the designers in the Crochet Society box. I forgot what number it was, to be entirely honest. But there's, if you're in the UK, you can look forward to that. I, I think the designs in the Crochet Society box are so cute. And they are designs that are sustainable in the sense that you can make them in a short while and you can find lots of use for them. And if you don't use them, you can use the yarn for something else. So I think, I think in that sense, kits and subscription boxes are lovely just because sometimes you're in a funk and you need that extra oomph of creativity by making something that was designed for somebody else, by somebody else or, there was, or that was curated by somebody else. I find that very inspiring. I hope that you guys weren't offended. I didn't offend anybody with my question of is knitting becoming fast fashion. Like I said, I completely understand the perspective of the small business person of just trying to create more and more and more. I think we should be kinder to them in terms of not um, of when they say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just recycling this old post, we encourage them and let them know that we understand that making things is gonna take a while so we don't always expect to see new items from them because I think as content creators, that is some huge funk we can fall into and then that just kills all our joy for what we are making. So what else have I been up to? Uh, commissions, I, I have, uh, as I said, several of them coming up. And I also finished a book, and I started like three more. I finished The Hidden Life of Trees. I loved that book. It was read to me. It was an audiobook that I rented through the library. Beautiful reading voice and so educational, but in a way that just, it felt like a fairy tale, honestly, like you're learning about all these connections that trees have and how they thrive in their in chosen environments or the environments where that nature chose for them, how they migrate. And this, it just honestly felt like a fairy tale, like you're learning about this whole new world inside our very own earth. If you can get your hands on The Hidden Life of Trees, I 
fully recommended. Of course, please take all recommendations with a grain of salt because I understand that we don't all have the same tastes and something that I might have greatly enjoyed may or may not be something that you greatly enjoy. And I started reading Once Upon a River. Uh, it's a slog getting through that for me because I think it's a book that I'm reading more because I started it and it's a library rental than because I actually feel compelled to finish the book. It is written in an interesting way, like uh, she draws a lot of parallels with the river and how we and our life flows and how sometimes we start in one direction and then we just go in different ones. And it kind, it's kind of like a, I forget the name, but have you seen the movie Snatch where you've got all these different stories that somehow all come together around this one central item and that's how they're, you know, they're connected. That, that book is kind of like that. There's all these different stories and they all connect in one certain point around a little girl. And the idea is, you know, you're reading all these trying to find out who that little girl actually is and, you know, potentially you find out at the end of the story. I don't know, I'm in chapter 20 something. I'm tempted to skip to the end, but I'm afraid that if I skip to the end to find out what happens, I won't understand because there are details that are dropped very slowly in and unexpectedly inside these character stories that will help you uh, pinpoint why something happened and things like that. So I don't know if I'm explaining myself very well, but uh, please go ahead and read the summary. I'll include uh, the link in the description box below if you're interested. And um, my cousin sent me a book for my birthday in Spanish, written by a Puerto Rican writer, which I'm reading. It's interesting. It's like a mix of Mulan with Lord of the Rings. That's how I feel it is anyway. So I'm going to read that. I'm much slower in reading Spanish because I don't know how you read. But when I read, there's like a little voice that is reading to me inside my head. And the voice that reads to me in Spanish, I don't like her accent. I don't like her voice. I that that probably made me sound very crazy, but yeah. Sorry. Was that TMI? I don't know. But I just I had to share that with you because I don't know, maybe you think you're alone in the world, but you're not. You know, just I'm there with you. So that is what I've been doing. I uh, also finished watching some anime for those anime watchers out there. Finished watching Cautious Hero. I did not like that ending. I cried. I did. And we, I think I started watching something with my husband. Oh, we watched Comey Can't Communicate. That was so wholesome and cute. I'll include the links to, the, uh, or at least the written words down below. We see them through Crunchyroll, but you know, so hopefully you've enjoyed this time that you spent with me and we can wish each other happy crafting. If you are not subscribed and would like to, then please do so. Also, if you would like to subscribe to my newsletter, please do so. I'm trying to be much more consistent with sending out a newsletter every week. Uh, they're not always about new patterns or things coming out. Sometimes they're just things I want to share with you. For example, how I unwind when the world gets crazy around me. And bonus, you can reply directly to my email so we can just have a chat and a conversation through there if, you know, replying where other people can read your comments is something that bothers you. Then there's also that I do do love replying to emails. And I also send out little new ideas of when designs are coming out and just general chatter like that in my newsletter. Um, so if you feel like that is something that interests you, then please also subscribe to my newsletter. It's just a great way to make sure we always keep in touch. So that is going to be it from me. I actually have plans to go out today, which weird, I know. Also very weird because I'm wondering if I can take my crochet. <laughs> But I will leave you here today. I will probably edit this video in the weekend and it'll make its way live to you either Sunday or Monday. And incidentally, speaking of that, 
please let me know in the comments below or I'll put a poll in my community tab on YouTube. When do you like videos to go out? Because we are a community and I do want to participate as much as I can and just, you know, your viewing pleasure, guys. I want to know, when do you guys want to spend time with me? Do you like it when I upload videos on Fridays? Do you like it when I upload videos on Mondays? Or do you just, doesn't matter to you because you'll watch them whenever you have the time, which is perfectly okay. No judgment. Absolutely no judgment. So anyway, guys, I hope that you have a happy crafting and that you are able to find some time for yourself in these coming weeks. And, and I will see you in two weeks time for, another, for a podcast episode. And I think I'll also be recording a thrift flip with crochet, of course. So that is it from me today. Have a lovely rest of your day or have a lovely night if you are watching this during your time or if you're watching this in the morning. Good morning. Okay, I'm really just rambling now, so bye. We definitely treat others. No. Coño. Go Hello? Okay. As what a...